how much work uh, Marco put into this one as well as he does all of his work. Um, I didn't go choose to do all of the bells and whistles. Like, you, his print is actually really well done as well. So, this is a mystery maker. We're going to jump into that right now. Countdown to on air. TV and here's the call. Places. Sound speed. On the set. Camera speed. Printed prop shop. Thermal detonator. Market. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the Print Prop Shop. Welcome back to the Printed Prop Shop. I'm Michael. So today is a cool one. I've changed it up a little bit. Um, this week I actually did a Grizzly Mountain design uh, and it is a thermal detonator. Check that out. Isn't that cool? Now I've hidden the switch underneath the actual switch. I attempted to go and get the actual switch to work, but the only thing it really does is it turns it off. I haven't been able to get it turned back on yet. Um, without pulling it out and hitting the switch again, but it's going to be a shelf display, so I'm not really too worried about it. I've got everything compartmentalized inside, and uh, I hope you saw in the opening too. I had I took his actual model, Grizzly Mountains the mo uh, Grizzly Mountain Designs model, and put it into an object file and put it into my opening. It's it's subtle because it's pretty small. But um, look out for it. Watch it again and look out for it. So, without further ado, here's how I did it. So I just want to show off some of Grizzly Mountain Design's artwork here and uh, check it out. Okay, so I'm jumping into it right now. I wanted to point this out. I'm doing it at 0.6 millimeters. It's extra fine. And I'm using a GTEC A30 Pro. And there's my settings if you'd like to check it out. I'm sure they're not real accurate, and I'm sure someone's got better settings, but this is what I used, and you can see how it turned out here in a minute. Um, at least in the finished product, you can see how it turned out. It did take quite a while, 20 hours and 22 minutes. And this was all PLA that I printed it out with. Uh, it did have support material. So as far as what I did in resin, I did the anything that was internal and the actual buttons and the uh, light. It was all out of clear resin. Now, what I found in the past was connecting resin pieces don't normally work unless you go and scale back a little bit. So the pin I scaled back a little bit and the receptacle that the pin goes into, I actually scaled up just slightly. Um, and this was all done out of clear resin as well, just so that it was what I had on hand. And I wanted the actual button light to be out of clear resin so I could put the LED behind it and the only thing that really needed support was the receptacle for the pin and the actual sliding trigger So I'd already thrown on a coat of primer and gone through that I wasn't gonna bore you with it But I did do uh, wet sanding next with 400 grit sandpaper and uh, During this process, you know, you start losing detail lines So I wanted to point out this little nifty trick that I saw uh, From I like to make stuff Bob on there he actually built one and he used a, a nail to go and do the trim lines. And uh, I just went and followed along with it. I used a screw, it was what I had on hand. And I did both of the top and bottom. And uh, I, I can say this is probably one of the best processes I found. I thank Bob a lot for uh, sharing that idea with it. And uh, you know, the biggest thing is just be really slow and be really careful because you don't want to slide off and dig into it and don't dig really hard. Just kind of let it slide through almost like you're sanding. And after that, I went into 800 grit sandpaper. Now, after letting everything completely dry, and I can't stress that enough, let it completely dry because PLA for some odd reason keeps moisture. Um, after that, I threw down a coat of flat black. And uh, you might be asking why I didn't airbrush it. I just had flat black on hand and it was quicker to do out. And normally when you do any kind of shiny material, you wanna throw down some kind of black first just to make it pop a little bit better. So while my paint dried, I wanted to go and jump on the circuit here. 
I did want to drill into the actual button a little bit and I was at first going to use a little bit larger drill bit and have it sit in there but I knew I wasn't gonna recess it too far I just wanted something to glue to so I went with really the basically the same size as the LED and uh, once again when you're doing any kind of drilling into resin I wanted to emphasize this a little bit and I didn't speed this part up because uh, and I wish I got a better angle but you want to go fairly slow. I showed it in another video how slow you should go because resin will just, it'll just shatter on you if you go too fast. And uh, just go slow with it. And as you can see, it's recessed just a tiny bit, something to glue to. And then here I start going into stripping the wires. I do have a pair of wire strippers, believe it or not. But um, if you've done any kind of wiring over the past, like I, I've wired things over the last 25 years actually almost 30 years probably, with uh, home audio and car audio, and you just get a get a feel for um, how thick the shielding is, and you can kind of do it just like this um, once you get fairly experienced at it. I've even, I even did the wiring on this shop that I'm in currently. And as you can tell, the circuit works, and it does light up that button a little bit. Um, at least to where I wanted it to. Uh, it actually does really well. And I got this circuit on the first try. I was really surprised at myself. Normally I've, it takes me a couple tries to go and get it taken care of, but first time. Now that my circuit was working, I needed to go and uh, do some soldering. And I did this really quick as far as soldering goes. I do have a fan going, just so you know, I'm not just breathing in um, the solder fumes, but I've got a fan going. And uh, after that, after I got all of my soldering done, I just went and did a tape job on it just to make sure nothing touched once I got it all in that ball because it's going to be really close quarters. And this is just regular electrical tape. You can pick it up anywhere. Now was the time to actually throw on the top coat of the chrome there. I picked up this chrome paint at Lowe's. It was uh, just a, a chrome color. And the thing that you will see is you'll get orange peel on it still but it comes out pretty good and then I went into weathering I didn't weather this extreme uh, meaning I didn't pull out my uh, actual weathering kit I just went over it with uh, some really watered down black paint then I continued with some watered down uh, mixed orange uh, kind of orange color and some red with a little bit of black and uh, let that sit for a bit and then wiped it off. I did find that I needed to go and let it sit a little bit longer than, uh, than I normally would. And then uh, just took a paper towel and wiped it down. From there, it was uh, to try to get the electronics in it. I decided to just go with cutting out a piece of cardboard and uh, attaching it to the middle ring. I used the middle ring as a guide on uh, where I should put it. And then I attached the electronics to that cardboard and uh, super glued it in. All right, guys, that's how I did it. Uh, once again, it's a Grizzly Mountain Designs. Check him out all over the place. Um, and I, I actually take part in his Facebook as well, not only his Patreon, but uh, he, he's more than happy to go and answer your questions and things like that. Uh, I've messaged him plenty of times and gotten an answer back within a couple hours and you gotta you gotta remember these patreons are busy they're they're designing a lot so give them some time but everyone that i've ever talked to has always messaged me back pretty quickly so go out and make something go out and have a great day thanks for watching we'll see you next time see you see you on the other side stay alive Keep it together